Welcome to another episode of Wicked Easy Cooking. My name is Chef Colin Roach, and today we're making chicken piccata. And this was a request from one of our community members from West Roxbury, Massachusetts. You know who you are. So thought it would be a great time to make this because it's a super easy dish. Now I have the recipe right here, which I will post in the comments section as well as at the end of this video. Now chicken piccata is one of my wife's all-time favorite dishes. My family just loves it. Tender chicken breasts are dredged in flour and then seared until golden. What could be better? Well, I'll tell you. Lemon caper wine sauce. Serve this super wicked easy dish over some pasta. Now, I like to use a delicate pasta, like a thin spaghetti or um, angel hair pasta is perfect with it. But you could easily serve this with some mashed or, or oven roasted potatoes, side of broccoli. You know, it can go with lots of different dishes. I think it would be perfect with risotto as well. Uh, but today, again, we're going to serve it over pasta and with some, you know, maybe put a side salad with it, some crunchy French bread, and what else do you need? It's the perfect meal. And it's super quick. So let's get started. Okay, chicken piccata, or any piccata for that matter, like veal piccata, is simply a dish that features meat that's been pounded thin and then topped with a lemon buttery caper sauce that is usually served over pasta. And it's a classic Italian dish, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make today. So we're going to use chicken. So I have some chicken breasts here, which I'm going to show you how to fabricate, cut those up so you can, you know, get them so they'll cook evenly. Then we're also going to have a few other ingredients and it's going to get put together pretty quick. So again, I, probably under 30 minutes you could get this all going. So if you're going to do it with pasta, I would put your pasta water on. Mine's already hot here. So you put that on while you're doing all your prep work and then you just drop the pasta in. And usually, um, you know, angel hair or that thin spaghetti takes five minutes. You know, use fresh, can take about three minutes to cook, so it's really fast. So we don't want to start that too soon. But we do want to get our chicken dredged and sauteed and then start building our sauce in our pan. So to do that, I've made this for four, two chicken breasts. We're going to have the flour for dredging. We got four tablespoons of butter. I want you to divide it in half, two tablespoons each. The first chunk we're going to put in when we cook the chicken. The second part is it goes into our sauce to help finish it. Then we're going to have some olive oil as well. And that's going to add some flavor to it. We've got some garlic here, minced garlic. I'm going to put in uh, three cloves. But if you like garlic, add more. If you don't, like all my recipes, you know, take it away. That's fine. We're also, I'm going to add in some shallots. Okay, I've already chopped these up. In here I put two tablespoons. If you don't know what shallots are, you can buy those in your grocery store. They're a type of onion, but a very mild flavor with a hint of garlic in them. Awesome. Definitely a key ingredient in French cooking. But if you don't have them, don't worry about it. You could admit it. Or you could put in some really fine minced onion. Then we've got some white wine. Uh, I'm going to add a half a cup of this in, and this is to kind of make the base of our sauce we're going to deglaze our pan with. Now, for any kind of white wine to work, I suggest you use dry wine, not something really fruity. Do something dry. And I would also recommend you use the wine that you're going to end up drinking with this dish when it's complete. Makes sense. Then we're going to have some fresh lemon juice. In here I put two tablespoons. It's going to add that lemon to it. We're going to also add in some chicken stock, you know, base, whatever. Just If you have homemade, perfect. If not, just use store-bought in there. Makes it quick. Okay, then we've got two tablespoons of capers. If you don't know what capers are, they're the edible, unripened bud of a Mediterranean shrub. Okay, these are actually little flowers that haven't opened up yet. So what they'll do is they'll pick these off and, and usually pickle them, brine them, but you can get them dried, packed in salt as well. And there's different sizes of them, but they're yummy. They add a real unique flavor to numerous dishes, particularly any type of piccata. Okay, and then we're going to add some fresh parsley at the end here. Now, I want to talk about parsley. Parsley gets a bad name. It's like, oh, it's this little cheap herb that we put on the sides of a plate well, as a garnish. Well, technically, that garnish was supposed to be eaten. It's like a palate cleanser. It'll cleanse your palate, like in between courses and stuff. So parsley has that unique thing. We're going to add it in 
One reason for color, obviously, but also it's going to add a great flavor to it. And if you haven't found that out yet, here's a tip. Take some of this, break off little, you know, florets there, these little pelouges they call them, the little parsley leaves, and add them into a tossed salad. When you eat it, your guests will be like, wow, this tastes so good. Why is this salad so good? What is it? It's just that little parsley in there. As they're chewing it, it's really working with their palate and cleansing it as they're eating that salad. So give it a try. Okay, and then I've got Parmesan cheese. We're going to put that on at the end, but also we might put a little bit in the sauce. It does help thicken it. Now, the dish is also classically garnished with lemon. Fancy, you'll see wheels, lemon wheels on there, but some people like to put wedges. That way there, if a, you know, a diner is, wants a little bit more lemon in their sauce, they can just squeeze some fresh lemon into their you know, chicken piccata or over their pasta. So I'm gonna put in the recipe um, wheels or wedges, whatever you like, and maybe I'll cut both when we finish this dish, just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so let's work on that chicken right now. Okay, so as I mentioned, we got two chicken breasts here. We're gonna cut them in half and make it into four portions. We can always see that chicken is fatter on one end and thinner on another, so we're gonna to wanna to pound it out first to make it even. I'll put this in the recipe as well. So we wanna lightly pound it till it's an even thickness, a half inch or less, between a quarter and a half an inch. Okay, to do that, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some plastic wrap here and we're gonna put it onto our you know, cutting board here. Move that knife out of the way. And then we're just going to place these chicken breasts onto it. All right, and then we're going to close it up over it. Now, to flatten these down, of course, we're going to be spending most of the time on the fat end and not on the tail end. And to flatten it down, I happen to have you know, a little meat tenderizer mallet here, which are real handy, I use them a lot. Um, if you're interested, I'll put a link down in the comment section where you can get them. But have no fear, if you don't have one and you don't use it a lot, you could use anything. You know, oftentimes if I'm in a pinch, I'll use the bottom of a pan. Just smack it with a pan or a rolling pin. That would work as well. So something along those lines, but this you have a little bit more control with. And we're gonna use the flat side here, not this, you know, too aggressive that would rip the chicken, all right? So again, hitting on the end here, working it to about a half an inch, okay? And the trick to put plastic wrap on both sides, because if you don't, it's gonna stick to the board and it's gonna tear the chicken. So you want that plastic wrap so it can slide and make, you know, keep its uniformity. Okay, that's just about it there. So as you can see, now this chicken breast, I'll hold it up here, so you can see is now even. I'll put it on a plate, it's even easier to see. You can see now that it's all uniform in thickness. You know, a quarter to a half an inch is all we need. All right, so when we get to that part, we can cut it in half and make our different portions. We'll take this plastic wrap off of it, and we're just gonna take our knife Cut those right in half, as even as possible. So we'll have our four portions. Yeah, right about there. Okay. So now we have our four portions. I'm gonna clean up this area and sanitize it, and then we're gonna go on to cooking it. So I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, we've got step one taken care of. Chicken's all portioned up here, and it's all been evenly flattened. So now we're gonna go on to steps two and three and start cooking it. So first we wanna season both sides of the chicken. You know, salt and fresh black pepper. And then again, we'll just use our tongs here to turn it, so we don't have to retouch it and clean our hands all over again. So again, some salt on this side. We wanna season both sides. Do you know why we season both sides of a piece of meat or a piece of chicken? Because we eat both sides. Ha, ha, ha. All right, now we're gonna dredge this in flour, shaking off any excess. But first, I have my pan over here. It's on medium-high heat. What we're gonna do is put two tablespoons of those four tablespoons of olive oil, olive oil into the pan. Just guessing here. And then, two tablespoons of our four tablespoons of butter into that oil. 
And this is what we're going to cook the chicken with. So we'll put that on. It'll start to heat up. That butter will melt. And that's what's going to give us a saute. So now we're going to take this chicken and dredge it into some flour, which just means lightly put through the flour and shake off any excess because we're not making a breading on here. We're just trying to put some flour to prevent it from sticking and to provide a little bit of color when we hit, hook it in the oil. Because chicken is a white meat, not like, you know, a steak or something, it doesn't have any of that pigment in it that's going to help it brown. So usually with white meats like fish, chicken, you know, pork, we usually dredge it in a little bit of flour first. That helps facilitate the browning process. All right, so I got one done. I'll put it back over here and go on to these other three while our pan heats up. Okay, our pan is heating up nicely here. I'll give you a little look. You can see the butter is melted. Starting to get a little foamy, you know, crackling a little bit from the water in that butter. So just another minute here and we can start adding in our chicken. Now, no big thing here, but here's a little professional chef tip. On the chicken, the side that had the skin, we call the presentation side. And if you look at it, it's really smooth. The other side's really jagged where it was cut off the bone. So anytime we're cooking anything in a restaurant, we always start with presentation side down. That's how we teach it to you know, our students because that way they, it's the hottest part of the pan when you first add something. Then of course the temperature is gonna reduce and cool down as the cold product goes into the pan. So to get that first best blast of, of heat, we're going to use the presentation side down so that way then when we serve it to a customer, that's the side that's up that gets the best uh, color to it. All right, so let's add that in. Again, presentation side down. Okay. Now, if you're going to double this recipe and do it for eight or so, you're going to want to do it in batches. You don't want to put too much in there and overload it. You need some space some, for that chicken to actually cook. So I'll show you. This one's pretty good, maybe a little tight. Okay, so we can let that cook. And now I'm going to just clean this area up while that's heating up. And then I'm going to show it to you. We're going to make that pan sauce and drop the pasta. It's come together really quick. Okay, these are heating up really nice. Take a look. So now we can turn them. Here we go. Again, you don't want it too brown, just golden brown. What we would call doré, you know, just a light brown coating to it. We're not frying chicken here. We just want to make a little coating on it. See? So we're going to let the other side cook. Now we don't have to fully cook the chicken because we're going to put it back in the sauce afterwards to finish cooking. So just want to get it, you know, maybe half, three quarters of the way. If you pound it a little bit thinner, it may cook all the way, which is totally fine. And what you're going to want to do is have a you know, clean plate, put them on, not the one that the raw chicken was on, and some aluminum foil. Now we're going to tent that to heat, hold the heat in while we quickly make our sauce. Oh, this smells really good. You can smell the butter. You know, it's just so rich right now. And that's going to be the basis of our sauce. Now some of that flour and bits of chicken is going to come off on the bottom of the pan. That's perfectly all right. That's actually what we want. We call that fond, those little charred bits on the bottom. We're going to use that white wine in a minute with our lemon juice to deglaze that pan. Okay? That's going to bring those bits up, reconstitute them, be part of our foundation of our sauce before we put in our you know, chicken stock and our other aromatics, which is our you know, garlic and shallots and stuff. So that's not a problem. Okay, chicken's just about done. You can see both sides nice and brown, golden brown. That's what we're looking for, you know, not fried here. So we can put that onto our plate. And we'll put that back on the heat. Just going to tent this real quick just to kind of keep that heat in. We'll push that off to the side. And now, as it says in your recipe, we're going to add a little bit more oil if we have to. The recipe says add another tablespoon of oil. I don't think we need that much. Maybe just a little bit. So you want to make sure there's enough in there to cook our aromatics. And now we're going to add in the shallots. This is going to cook very quick, so you got to watch it. We don't want to scorch our garlic and make it bitter. 
So we just want to add that in. Woo, right away, you get a waft of that great flavor and smell to it. As soon as that cooks, less than a minute, if it starts getting too brown on you, we're going to go right in with the wine. I think it's okay. It's not brown yet. Ooh, it smells wonderful. Okay, that's good. For me, I'm going to add in the wine. Okay, that'll cool it down, stop the cooking process so the garlic doesn't burn or overcook in the shallots. Okay, we'll add the lemon juice at the same time. And now we're going to put this back on the heat, bring it up to a boil and let it reduce, at least by half. We're going to try to get it kind of dry. You know, they call that au sec. We want to get that dry so it gets kind of syrupy. That's the foundation of our sauce. Then we're going to add the chicken stock and our capers and seasoning. And that's it. So I think this is probably about a good time to drop the pasta. So I've got the boiling water here. Now the ratio with pasta, if you don't know, you need a lot of water. You know, really boiling rapid water with some salt in it. The ratio is usually one gallon of water uh, for one pound of pasta and about a tablespoon of salt. All right, you don't need any oil in it. That's not really going to help anything. It just floats to the surface. Add the oil afterwards. You don't need any oil. But you do want to have salt because it is a starch and it'll pick up some of that flavor. So I've got um, you know, about a half of the box here. So I've got a half a gallon of water, two quarts, up to a rapid boil. And I'm going to add this spaghetti in there. Okay, we'll let that cook. Oh, the sauce is cooking down. You can smell the wine. The alcohol is what's burning off, and then what happens is that flavor of the wine is getting reduced, which is strengthening that flavor, which is going to provide a great base for our sauce. Okay, now as this cooks and reduces, you want to scrape up the bottom of the pan. Any of those, you know, little bits on the bottom left over from the chicken or the flour, we want to rehydrate them and get them incorporated into our sauce. Again, all this is evaporation. Liquid's going up, flavor's staying and getting stronger. This is really what's going to make the sauce, make the flavor that we're looking for. Okay, that's pretty close. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our chicken stock. So we need about a half a cup of chicken stock. So we'll get that measured out. That's about the right ratio, with this much chicken in it. And this is going to cook down a little bit as well. So now we're down to step number eight. So you can see this is really reduced. It's getting kind of syrupy with that white wine, and it's going to be very acidic uh, with the lemon juice in there as well. But that's okay because it's going to get neutralized a little bit with the chicken stock and this whole butter we're going to swirl in. Okay, so we can add our chicken stock. Put it back on the heat. Here, we want to give our pasta a stir. Uh, this, this particular uh, type takes about six minutes. So I have the timer set. And it's about four minutes left, three and a half minutes. So we'll just let that keep cooking while I'm finishing my sauce. Now, another good thing, as I mentioned, a side salad, Italian salad, a little Caesar salad would be wonderful with this. And also some nice bread, crusty bread. Like we have here, I've got this nice, you can get French bread, Cuban bread, you know, some sourdough baguette, something like that. You know, maybe slice it up, toast it a little bit in the oven, and serve that. This is best to be sopping up all that leftover sauce. It's wonderful with a salad. Great dinner. Get some bread, too. And now we're going to add in our butter. And this is a critical step in the recipe because what we're doing is we're going to add the butter. And this is called monte au beurre or mount with butter. And this butter is going to mix with the sauce or the liquid in here and it's going to emulsify it, making it a little bit thick. So the trick to doing that is you've got to keep it swirling. You can't just let it melt and turn into grease. You want to swirl it in with this hot sauce. So take our pan off. I'll show you this. I'm going to put this in here. And then we're just going to swirl it around. Okay, as it's cooking. Okay, I'll put it back on the heat, and I'm going to add in the capers as well now. Okay, we have all of that off to the side. We've got our cheese and our parsley. Yeah, sauce is coming together. You know, it's going to be lemony, that base of the reduced wine. It's got the brininess and saltiness of the uh, capers, which is going to go great. Now, it's going to be strong, 
but when you hit the pasta or risotto or rice, it's going to neutralize it a little bit. So let's do a little taste. Pepper. I'm going to put a touch of salt. Okay, now what we want to do is return the chicken into here. All right, so we've got that chicken breast that we did before. I'm going to take those off of our pan, put those in that sauce. Okay, and then anything that comes off, any drippings onto the plate, pour that in as well. All flavor there. Okay, and then I'm going to turn the chicken and make sure it's all coated in that sauce. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. And some of the flour will come off the chicken, help thicken that sauce as well, help emulsify. Oh yeah, look at those capers. Good, now I'm gonna put it back on for a minute. I might turn down the heat. Don't need it boiling. Oh, my timer's ready. You hear that in the background? That means my pasta is ready to be drained. So bring this chicken up to temperature. Let me drain this pasta and then we'll plate this up. Okay, so we've got our pasta drained. I got the chicken. Doesn't that look good? Now the last step here, nice and thick sauce, all coating that chicken, is we're gonna add in the parsley. Okay, this is gonna add some, this is gonna add some of that color that we talked about as well as the flavorings to it. So you want to incorporate that into the sauce. You don't want to add this too early because obviously that nice bright green of the chopped parsley will turn that old army man green, you know? We don't want that. It's not very attractive. So here we go. So I've got some lemons too, as I mentioned. Cut them into <clears throat> wedges and into you know, wheels. Uh, a lot of times you'll see these wheels put on a dish in a restaurant. They kind of cook it right in the sauce. I don't like to do that so much because of that white pith. Oh, that kind of makes it bitter. So I'd add it in at the end. And then you got some wedges you could put on there. So I have a plate here, fork and knife. Got some of that linguine or fine spaghetti. Turn that, give it a little twist. All right, we'll take one of these chicken breasts, put it off to the side here. And I'll tell you a little tip. When I cook this at home, I'll take the chicken out, portion it up, and then I'll put the pasta right in the sauce and make sure it gets tons of it. But, you know, some people may not like as much. So, you know, in that case, you just, you know, take some and put it on the pasta like this. Okay, and then hit it with some cheese. And there you go. Chicken piccata. And now I'm going to put a couple of these wheels on the edge here, maybe for a garnish. You could actually put a wedge on there if you want it as well. And yes, yeah, clean up that side. Can you see it? Okay. But now let's taste it. Let get a piece of that chicken in there. Put a little pasta with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's going to drip. Ah. Mm. So tender. So juicy, but at the same time, it's got that caper and lemon sauce. Mm. More cheese for me. <clears throat> awesome. There you go. Hope you try this at home. Definitely, as always, put it in the comment section how you liked it. And if you want to see other recipes or something you want to see in future videos, let me know. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We'd appreciate it. We'd love to have you as part of the community. And hit the bell so you're notified when new videos get posted. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.